Great is the list and welcome to another video. So today I'm going to do something a little bit different from what I used to in this channel. Today we're going to do a double discussion. Uh, we're going to be discussing uh, two different topics, but one is going to be segueing its way into another. And once you see the segue, you'll understand what I'm meaning by that. But firstly, uh, I want to talk about virtual world. Uh, if people have been catching on or have been paying attention this deck has slowly been like solidifying itself into this uh, current meta game it won the spanish nationals uh, two weeks ago and they also topped the switzerland uh, nationals the week afterwards i saw the i saw both lists and uh after the explanation given from the Swiss Nationals uh, topping list, I kind of figured it was a very good time to talk about uh, this deck because Virtual World is in a very interesting spot. Nothing about the deck changed at all. The deck, in a way, you can say has been power crept. However, the format itself and the way the format is being played and the trends that people are leading towards are things that very very benefits virtual world at the moment and i kind of want to talk about it uh so uh for those who don't know what virtual world is i'll give a brief synopsis uh, basically, it's a plethora of psychic and worm monsters that just special summons themselves from the hand by targeting another virtual world. Uh, the only exception is Nyan Nyan. Nyan Nyan, instead of like spawning itself, it uh, it can recur something from Banish if it's banished. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, but yeah, so... Every single one of these monsters have the same effect. Uh, first effect, be, uh, you target you target one card that is a virtual world card. You special summon them, and then they do a secondary effect. This grabs from the graveyard. This foolishes an extra fo uh, virtual world. This adds a third name from different from what you foolished. This special summons, and I already explained the onion. Uh, this is a card that pops one by returning two from banished. This can banish itself to special or virtual world uh, from the field. On the board, it can just switch the position of a monster. Uh, this is basically imperm, but on the graveyard, you can banish it to add a virtual uh, world monster, but you have to send a card afterwards. And then you have Kaloon that can spawn the rest of your gates. There are other virtual worlds besides these, but these are the most played ones. These are the most common ones. These are the ones that you should actually worry about when you're building and playing your strategy. Um, you also have Juju that uh, is indestructible by battle or card effects if you control two of the same attribute. You have Chen Chen. Chen Chen is the most powerful one and is one of the merits uh, behind this deck. It basically makes anything that leaves the field become banished. And then you have Fan Fan that is a, just a good board breaking card. It can just pop a card on the field, banish from the graveyard. Uh, if it's destroyed itself, it can spawn two virtual names uh, from your deck. Now that I gave a brief synopsis on Virtual World, uh, let's talk about what is making them very playable, this format. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is it's the deck's main interaction against hand traps. As you guys already know, we're in a heavy hand trap format. What warrants uh, that trend is the popularity of snake eyes. I'm just going to show you like the more popular hand traps that we're playing at the moment. We have Ash Blossom, Veiler, Imperm, Ogre, uh, Ghost Mourner, uh, Nibiru. These are like the more popular ones. And then you have Droll and uh, Ghost Bell, which are a little bit less popular, but they are still being played in the format uh, around some people's main or side decks. Let's start with the elephant in the room. Let's start with Ash Blossom. So Ash Blossom is sort of effective against this deck because it does stop every virtual name from being summoned. However, 
it's very awkward for you to ver uh, Ash Blossom this deck because you're going minus one. The virtual uh, world player loses nothing from your interaction with Ash Blossom while you are wasting your Ash Blossom itself. So uh, that already that alone already makes Ash Blossom not super effective against virtual world. It's pretty much in the same boat as Tier Elements when you try to like Ash a Sharon, but the Sharon stays in hand and they lose literally nothing from it. All they lost is an interaction on the board while you lost an Ash Blossom. FF Veiler and Infinite Impermanence. I guess I'll talk about Ghost Mourner since those three fall into the same category. These three cards do nothing to this deck. Uh, all the virtual monsters do their secondary effect upon resolution of their first effect, meaning that they all activate from hand, uh, which means by the time this is reborning, this is adding, this is foolishing, uh, you already lost your timing in order to use Veiler, Imperm, or Mourner. Uh, so that already makes this deck very strong against these three cards. And these are like the more popular hand traps in the format. Uh, so you already have four hand traps that are very awkward into this matchup. Uh, Ghost Ogre is another one that really doesn't do anything. Like uh, it can stop the Chuchi from popping a card. It can stop the Queen Long from negating. But the Queen Long uh, wants to be in the graveyard, so like that's not really a beneficial effect from them. And the same reason as all the other three aforementioned ones, uh, this does not interact with any virtual name that is currently on the board, uh, on the board or uh, from their hand. So Ghost Ogre is already kind of mediocre against them as well. And then you have Nibiru. Uh, Nibiru can both be either the best or the worst card against Virtual World. It can be the best because some Virtual World players do overextend with their board and they just end on a lot of boss monsters. Uh, but at the same time, Nibiru can be kind of awkward because some people can be just minimalistic with the deck and just end on summoning Shenshin alongside the Shushi. And they can do this easily under five summons. So uh, this already is a win condition in itself in this deck. And it can play through Nibiru. So uh, you can say Nibiru is effective against the deck, but it's kind of on a fringe category where it's not always effective. So out of the six most popular hand traps, you have two of them that are okay against the matchup, and the other four are just very bad into the matchup. So that's one big contributing factor. Uh, uh, Ghost Bell also doesn't do a lot. Like, Ghost Bell interacts with the Xiangwu. It can also interact with Chen Chen's effect in the graveyard. It can also interact with Lao Lao. And it can also interact with Gigi because Gigi does have an effect to add in the end phase. So, Ghost Bell is kind of uh, interesting against this deck, but it goes back to the Ash Blossom situation where you're wasting your Ghost Bell and they lose nothing from it. And then you have Drawling Lockbird. Uh, Drawling Lockbird is kind of really good against this deck. However, Drawling Lockbird is not very popular right now. Not many people can play Drawling Lockbird because it's not really good into every matchup. Uh, and if the Virtual World player is stuck on the draw, they can still get to Chen Chen plus Trap. Uh, like the Kowloon just places the card, so it dodges the Drone Lockbird. And sometimes they only just need one add, and the add is technically going to be either from Queen Long or from Lily, uh, Lulu. Now that I talked about the interaction against hand traps, which is like one of the biggest selling points of this deck, let's talk about board breakers. Uh, the most popular ones right now are Droplets and uh, Talents. I'll start with Droplets. If Kyuubi Chenchen is on the board, Droplets is kind of mediocre against this deck because you cannot send anything from field to the graveyard in order to negate. You're gonna have to expend your resources from your hand in order to actually negate something if you want to play around Chenchen. So that 
means that you're already already exhausting a lot of your resources a lot of plays that involve forbidden droplets uh breaking boards or their interactions on just moving cards that you're already using on the field but with Shenshen on board you cannot do that and that already makes this card kind of awkward against the matchup uh the other one is uh triple talents and triple talents can be effective against this deck however if we go back to the Chen Chen Shushe situation, uh, talents uh, is not going to help you because this is just a minimalistic, minimalistic board state. They're all, they're just controlling the board with Shushe's interactions. Chen Chen by itself is just very strong against a lot of decks. Not many decks can play through Chen Chen, and that's already like a very big deal. So. Uh, you can say talents can be effective against this deck because a lot of virtual world players are not just going to end on Chen Chen Pass But if people want to play around talents, they will Chen Chen Pass and Chen Chen Pass With like a backed up with hand traps or backed up with other cards or backed up with this particular card that is in this corner Which is the segue to this conversation uh, It's just going to win them the game more than not so now that we talked about their interactions against like the more popular cards in the meta game, let's talk about the other elephant in the room, and that is skill drain. So uh, skill drain has been seen on every virtual world list, and if we go back to the April uh, like forbidden limited list. We already know that Konami has done a witch hunt behind Floodgates. However, one Floodgate that they have not touched has been the Skill Drain. And it's very perplexing to me how this card is still not hit because it's hitting Master Duel, it's hitting the OCG. Uh, the card already has a dozen reprints, so they don't have to worry about uh, marketing this card despite their uh, surgeons in the rarity collection. However, like anti-spell fragrance also appeared in the rarity collection and that card has already been limited. So yeah, like if we switch swings, uh, scenes real quick, this is the finals of the Spanish, Spanish nationals. This is virtual world versus melodious and uh, if we see game one, we see that skill drain is already like making a very profound effect on the first game. That's not to say that Virtual World won solely because of skill drain, but skill drain really contributed to one of the games that led to the success of the Virtual World player at this event. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is skill drain in general because if we look at the finals of YCS Indianapolis, we see that this is game three of the finals and skill drain was also an interaction here. It was to a point where Paolo uh, activated cross out just for the skill drain. Uh, this is very, very strong technical play. Like... Is th this is like a play that most pro players are going to like expect, uh, to like been doing, but it's not like the most common thing for every player to be doing because skill drain is not as common as like a hand trap or like a specific board breaker like talents and droplets. Uh, so that was a very heads up play from Paolo to just keep skill drain in, in their deck. Uh, skill drain does dictate uh, how this mirror match is performed, uh, like the snake eye one. And it's just a very strong card overall. Like it stops, it, it's not only strong against snake eyes, but it's strong against a lot of popular decks in the format. Branded, voiceless voice, um, tempai dragons, labyrinth, even though some labyrinth decks uh, play skill drain. Uh, some like uh, other fringe decks uh, are just going to lose to skill drain uh, if they are not prepared for it. And yeah, uh, whether or not skill drain uh, is in the format, we can say that virtual world 
actually does have a place in this particular format. And if you're smart with, uh, with how this metagame works and just like properly deck build and properly learn interactions against like your opponent's cards, I think uh, you can do well with Virtual World. But at the same time, I think that very strong cards like Skill Drain should be in your main deck if you're playing this deck. Uh, let me know in the comments if you are interested in an updated Virtual World list. I know it's been a while since I showed Virtual World in this channel. I mainly showed it when Age of Overlord came about because of their interactions with the XYZ Torpedo cards. Um, the, the XYZ Armored cards, rather. But there are other ways to play Virtual World now. It doesn't have to be standard. You can play with Goblin Bikers as well. You can play with Punk. You can play it with uh, a plethora of other engines. Obviously, Skill Drain is like the most important card in this deck now. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope you found this video informative. This is my first time doing a double discussion. So free... Uh, feel free to let me know in the comments if you actually liked this kind of content. Uh, I will aim to doing a little bit of, more, of these more uh, if people are actually interested. Uh, but yeah, that's it from me. I hope uh, I see you again soon. Uh, keep practicing and keep dueling.